Plus on a more serious note, because this has been the part unofficially of HTTP protocol, it is possible that a lot of services might break if this is removed from the spec, right? There's a status code in HTTP, which is 418, I am a teapot. Now, why does that exist? Why this is important? Let's figure out in this video. Also, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and like the video to receive daily updates on programming content released on CodeDAM. This video is a part of CodeDAM's t-shirt giveaway program for the month. If you want to take part and win an amazing CodeDAM t-shirt, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it, you are eligible. If your comment gets a heart from CodeDAM, you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free. Before actually getting to 418, let's first of all look at what HTTP status codes are, right? So HTTP is a protocol we have discussed a bit about this in the REST versus GraphQL video, which you can find somewhere as a card in the description. But what HTTP status codes are, they are a collection of numbers, which are also not, you know, continuous in nature. So there could be just a few numbers in a certain range. So let's start with one, 100 range. So 1xx stands for any number which starts with 1, any status code which starts with 1 and then has two digits, right? So this right here, this range right here is for informational responses as the MDN doc says. And to be honest, I have not seen any, any sort of use case of 1xx except for status code 101, which is used when you upgrade a WebSocket connection to WebSocket connection, that is you have an HTTP connection and that gets upgraded to a WebSocket connection, which again, which we discussed in our WebSocket versus HTTP video. Again, you can find somewhere the link for that. Then we have a range of 200, where the most common one I probably on the internet is status code 200. Okay, which is basically saying that whatever you did, the request, the operation was successful on the server, right? This is probably the most common status return code on the internet right now. There are a few more codes in this range. For example, the 204 return code means that there was no content returned from the server. So it's just a just a confirmation that whatever you want does not have a content. And this is mostly used with caching updates. So updating the header cache and stuff like this. And you also have 206 as the status update, which is partial content. And this is very, very useful when you are, for example, watching a video, right? streaming a video whatever you're doing so you don't want the server to return the full video in the single response because that will be heavy and you would lose the ability to seek the video right and download selectively the part of that so there the server returns 206 as the code then in the range of 300 we have the redirection messages which is basically saying that hey to the client that hey i want you to not go to this url which you're trying but try some other URL, right? So 301, 302, these are temporary permanent redirect status codes, 307 and 8 as well. So there are a bunch of status codes obviously missing in, in this range as well and this range as well. And you can see that pretty much whole range is unused, right? You would probably have five or 10 more status codes in two, 200 range and similarly for 300 range, right? So it's not about, it's not about making use of all the numbers because if that was then We'll probably just write all the status codes in the 100 range but it's more about this digit right here right and the purpose it serves if there's any use case where we you would want a new redirection message to happen that will go in the 300 range not in 200 or not in 100 range then we have finally have the 400 range which is the client errors that is client did something bad whether it's unauthorization or you know not allowed or whatever and then we have the 500 range which is the server error that means server messed up that server crashed or server is down or whatever so these are all the ranges we don't have a 600 range at least not right now so we have a status code called 418 in this range right and if we take a look at some of the other status codes in this range we start with 400 as bad request 401 as unauthorized 403 forbidden, 404 not found and so on, right? So you can see that these are client-based errors and probably the names of Mr. Robot's episodes as well. But what you would see is that we have a 418 as the status code, which says I'm a teapot, right? So this is, this technically is not the part of the specification, right? So if you actually go and look 
in the specification you will not see that HTTP has to implement a 418 status code but this was implemented as a joke so in the month of April 1998 the IETF com community which creates these all these status codes and stuff which created the stuff actually proposed as a joke on 1st April that we should have a 418 as a status code for responding as a I am a teapot for anything which is brewing a coffee right so it's it's basically more or less a joke uh, which was implemented which was not even implemented as a specification at that time but has been the running joke for a long time if you want to see it for yourself you can go to google dot com slash teapot and google actually has a dedicated page which turns a status code of 418 and if you right click inspect element and see in the network tab and in the request section you will see that the status code return is actually 418. in fact a lot of frameworks and runtimes like node.js and golang as well for example actually allow you to return 418 as a standard status code right so you could technically return 418 from other languages but that might not be standardized node.js golang and a few more i think also implement this as a standard http return code in express you can technically say rest dot send code or i don't know what the syntax is press js and this and this will actually set the code as 418 send code or status code whatever the call is right if you go to this website say 418.com and see the struggle people had with Node.js, Golang and these sort of you know frameworks and runtimes in order to save 418 from being removed is actually funny and a bit interesting as well that developers want the status code to be made as an official HTTP status code as well and I do believe like it's a it's a fun thing to have in the spec itself whether or not you know it does not make any technical sense as per se but it has been part of the history for so long that it does not make sense remove it from the web plus on a more serious note because this has been the part unofficially of http protocol it is possible that a lot of services might break if this is removed from the spec right so yeah i mean it's good for everyone i think if we just make 418 as an official http status code but i would love to know your opinion on what do you think about this have you ever tried to return a 418 and if not would you try to do it right now once this video ends in one of your rest api endpoints as an easter egg because that is that is a cool easter egg right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you enjoyed it make sure you leave a like and hit the subscribe button thank you all for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon